Welcome to the Burning Ice Tech channel guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at Windows 11. Yes, that's right. You heard correctly. Windows 11. So much for Microsoft staying only on Windows 10 like they said. So it seems we got ourselves a Windows 11 now. And in case you guys are wondering what we have in front of us, this is the Insider Preview. It's not officially released yet. So far it looks like they're going to be releasing this around November or December. They said in the holiday season. Not cast in stone yet. In case you guys are wondering if this is going to cost you money, if it's going to be free. There's a lot of rumors making the rounds that it's going to be free. Some people say it's going to cost money. Also not cast in stone yet, but so far it looks like it's going to be a free upgrade towards the end of the year, provided that you meet the minimum requirements. Um, now, if you don't have Windows 10, then you might have to go and buy it. And that looks like it's going to be around 150, 200 bucks. That's in US dollars for those of you that don't know. Okay, and then let's talk about requirements. What are the minimum requirements that you need to meet to be able to run Windows 11? So the minimum requirements is one gigahertz CPU or faster, four gigabits of RAM, 64 gigabits of storage, obviously the more the better, same with the RAM, secure boot, TPM 2.0, and then lastly, a DirectX 12 compatible graphics card. So you can see obviously of the security, Microsoft is definitely taking the security a lot more seriously here. Okay, and something extra I would like to point out before we move on, in case anyone has been wondering about my taskbar looking like it's from Windows 95 or Windows 98, why it's so white, that is because I'm running this on the virtual machine in case someone has not noticed the blue bar at the top yet. And on a virtual machine, obviously, obviously I've got limited graphics and all that. So if you're running this on a machine with a proper graphics card, obviously not on a virtual machine, you would notice this taskbar is actually transparent. It's got a nice, smooth, crispy, transparent look and feel to it. And the same applies to a lot of the icons and stuff. You know, everything has got a nice, smooth, crispy look and feel to it. All the icons, all the images, everything has got nice little round edges, all of which we'll show you guys in a few moments. So overall, I love the look and feel of the new Windows 11, provided you've got the correct graphics and not running on a virtual machine like me today. Okay, and now let's take a look at the Start button and Start menu. Now, one of the things I personally noticed when I started playing of Windows 11 is where is the start button at the bottom left? And it's still here at the bottom. It's just moved here to the middle, so to speak. It's this one here on the left-hand side. Now, you guys might not be able to see this in my video because of the graphics on this virtual machine, but generally, if you hover your mouse cursor over one of these little buttons, like the start button, it actually has smooth, round little edges in a square format. Everything has got nice, smooth, little round edges, and it just looks beautiful. You know, too good to actually say. Now, if you were to go and click on that little button, and by the way, you do have the option to go and move that back to the bottom left if you so desire to go and do that. Here, you'll find all your little programs that's currently pinned. So just like of Windows 10, where you would have clicked on a little start button there, you'd see all kinds of tiles pinned. These are not tiles like on Windows 10. I think Windows 10 calls them live tiles and tiles. These are just programs that just pinned here. You get to go and choose what you want to go and pin here. Um, the only thing I've installed in this machine is Chrome because I wanted to see what it looks like when you install something, if it has any security questions and what sounds it makes. And for the most part, it's exactly the same. It just makes a nice soft little sound once it starts installing the program, but that's pretty much about it. So if I were to go and right click on this program and say pin to start, there it is. Give it a second. Let's go back to start. And now if I scroll down, there it is. You can actually scroll down and you'll find all the programs that you're looking for. Once again, this menu, you can see mine is white. If you've got the correct graphics, it's not white and dull like mine. It's actually a nice little crispy black look and feel to it. Very smooth. So it's all got to do with the graphics today. Now you can also go here to the top right hand side, click on apps. It's going to show you all your applications in alphabetical order. I haven't installed anything besides Chrome right now. You can see it says new there. So all of it's organized alphabetically for you. And how nice is that? All right, so I'm going to close, close that. Here at the bottom, it's going to show you your app history. At the moment, there's nothing going on on my PC. But if you had a bunch of files that you opened recently, that's going to display here. And you'll find there's actually a little next button here. And if you've had quite a bunch, you can go more or just go further back in time. Just go check which other documents you recently opened. So it's very much the same as Windows 10. They just moved some of the options around. Okay, and in case anyone has been wondering where you shut down this machine or restart a machine that's got Windows 11, that's here at the bottom right. So once you click on the start menu or start button, so to speak, bottom right here, there's a little icon. If you click on that, 
disconnect, shut down, and restart. So that's how you restart and shut down a Windows 11 machine for the, for the most part. Now for our next icon on the taskbar being the search button here, if you were to go click on search, you still have the ability to go and search your PC. You still have the ability to go and search the internet. Once again, mine is just white in nature because of the graphics. But if you were to go run this on a PC of a proper graphics card, nice little black crispy look and feel, which is somewhat transparent, nice little round edges. Now, depending on which insider preview you have on Windows 11, I've seen in some cases you'll find control panel and all those kinds of apps here as well. So you can see in my case, they still have the control panel. Uh, you still have your top apps, recent files that you recently opened, all of those are things you can still see here. So that's still here. If I were to go and click on control panel, surprisingly, this is actually still there. I'm very surprised by that. Just a complete overall um, of all the icons and stuff, as you can see. You can see the icons just looks different, but they're still the same. I mean, potato, potato. You can still go and rearrange this. Large icons, small icons. So that still hasn't changed much. I mean, that's still exactly the same for now. Um, I don't know if Microsoft plans on maybe changing this anytime soon, but for now, it's still there. So you can still go and use that if that's your way to prefer. Now, the next item we have is multiple desktops. I'm just going to close this up. If you go have a look here at the bottom, the third little tile there, so to speak, if I go click on that little tile, you have the option now on Windows 11 to have more than one desktop. So you can go and have different themes, different wallpapers. On each desktop, you can have different icons. You can have different programs open on each desktop. I mean, look at that. I can just go make another desktop here. There we go. Make another one, make another one. Each of them with their own little programs that's got, that they've got open. Each of them with their own little icons, little wallpaper, if you will. So you can maybe make desktop one for work. We've got work icons, work programs open. Desktop two could be for personal after work where you've got game icons and a gamer background. So those are just some suggestions. Okay, and our next item on the list is widgets, which is the one right here in the middle. If you go click on that one, if you do it the first time, it may or may not ask you to sign in with a Microsoft account first. Not that many at the moment. You can go and choose from sports, weather, you name it. You can go and add more if you like. You can go remove them. You can go and resize them. So normally if you go and click here, you can go and resize these puppies if you need to. Make them bigger, make them smaller, remove them all together, add more if you'd like to go and do that. So that's pretty nifty to go and have. Okay, and just to add on to that, what you can go and do is if you've got yourself a touch screen of some kind, a tablet, or if this is a computer of a touch screen of some kind, you can actually drag the widgets from left to right. So you can swipe them in. So I'm just gonna click here at the bottom, but if you were to swipe from left to right here um, on the touch screen, this would actually pop up as well. Our next topic is snap layout, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go and click on a random item here. Let's open Chrome browser and I've installed it. So way at the top right hand side, instead of clicking on the maximize button, if you just hover your mouse cursor there, you'll have a bunch of choices between popular choices here of layouts. So if I were to go and click on that one there, it's gonna take this browser, this program or whatever it is that's open, in this case it's Chrome browser, and it's gonna snap it to the left side of my screen. If I click on that one, it's going to snap it to the right side of my screen. So if I click on that, look at that, snaps it to the right side of my screen. Now I can go and open something else, like this for example, and you can snap it somewhere else. Obviously you can still drag the browser or the item to the top and it's going to maximize it automatically. So I'm just going to go and hover my mouse cursor here and snap this one to the left. Look at that. So I've got Chrome on the right, I've got Edge on the left, perfectly snapped together. So you can go and snap things together. I'm just going to close that up again. Okay, now that we've got that closed, on to our next item on the agenda, being Explorer. If I open it up, like usual, doesn't have the nice little black theme because of me not having a graphics card or a proper graphics card of this virtual machine. But if you've got yourself a graphics card, you'll have a nice little black theme going for you here. The edges are going to be nice and round. All everything is going to be nice and smooth and round. But ignoring that fact, everything is still pretty much the same as you can see. Icons have just been remodeled. But for the most part, you can figure out what it is you're looking for in a matter of seconds. I like the fact that they've kept this the same. You know, the fact that it's still called this PC, the same as Windows 10. Um, on some of the previous operating systems, Microsoft sometimes changed this. At some point, it was called My Computer, and then it was called Just Computer, I think, depending on which operating system we're referring to. Still have your cloud access here. So for the most part, not too shabby. 
Okay, and then we also have settings. The settings for the most part is still pretty much the same. I believe Microsoft calls it the settings app. So I suppose I can just go and snap that or pin that here to the taskbar. Let's just go on a quick search for that puppy. Settings, oh, I didn't even finish typing that. Right click on that, pin it to the taskbar, click on it, and there we go. So for the most part, you still have access to the same options. Depending on what version of Windows 11 you have, and all that, this might look different. You know, I've seen there's a lot of insider versions at this point in time or early release versions, and not all of them have this exactly the same. So I think it depends. So this might not be set in stone. I think pretty much anything at this point in time might not be set in stone. It's a work in progress. So by the time they officially release it, it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of the stuff still gets changed. You know, they're probably going to make it even better than what it is right now. So for the most part, you can go and do stuff the same as what you would do in the past, just better and more. So you can go and change your theme if you need to. So if you really want, you can go and change this background, this wallpaper. You can change the overall theme. So if you were to go into Explorer and all of your apps, this is going to be a dark black background if you want to, or a green background or whatever theme you want. You can change the sounds, you know, whenever something's complete or when you're busy doing something with the computer, all of these sounds can actually be changed for the most part. Okay, and now for our next topic being the Microsoft Store. Now this has actually been updated quite dramatically. If I open that, you can't really see any big dramatic change off the bat with mine here, but I've actually seen many views of this Windows Store. It all depends on what version of the Insider Preview you've got. Once again, that brings me to the conclusion that there is nothing really set in stone at this point in time. I saw the same thing of Windows 7. I saw the same thing of Windows 10. Um, if you go play with the Insider Preview, you might find that when they release the final version, nothing looks the same as what you saw in the Insider Preview. So this is just to give you a taste as to what it might look like. So far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. You still have your gaming with the Xbox Game Pass. You also have Auto HDR like with the Xbox Series X. And then one of the biggest changes and one of my personal favorites is the fact that I can use Android apps now on Windows 11. So that's done through Amazon Store. At this point in time, I'm really just hoping that Google will also come to the party with their Google Play Store. Um, nothing have been heard there yet. So I can only hope and assume that they will join the party sometime soon. So let's just close this up and move on to our next item. Okay, and then our last item, uh, when it comes to management of your Windows 11 operating system, management tools for the most part, that is still pretty much the same. You still have access to the same administrative tools, management tools for the most part. So you can still access them, for example, by right clicking here on the start button, you'll find the issue traditional device manager, disk management, all of this is still the same. So for the most part, not much there has changed on the Windows 11 operating system. I like that consistency. So it seems for the most part that on Windows 11, it's mostly visually stuff has been overhauled. So, you know, they've got smoother corners, things fade in, fade out. They become transparent, nice little themes, nice little sounds. So it's mostly visually stuff has been changed. Not so much in features. Uh, I mean, there has obviously been changes to the features and functionality. They made a few things better here and there especially when it comes to security, but overall, mostly visually stuff has been changed. You know, they just made it more modern, more futuristic, you know, and I suppose that that makes sense because we are, you know, moving on with time. All right, guys, that is it for today's Windows 11 um, introduction. There's probably going to be more along the line as things progresses and unfolds. If you've learned something, please give the video a like. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, you will not know when new videos gets released. I also do a lot of free IT training on this channel in case you guys don't know. So feel free to go and have a peek there. Free IT training on pretty much any Microsoft course is going to be coming up in the near by future. So see you guys on the next video. Bye guys.